So hello and welcome to another Foreman community demo. Please note that this demo is being recorded. So if you have problems with the live stream, you can watch back at a later stage. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us on Freenode IRC or in the YouTube live chat as both are being monitored. Any questions that you ask throughout will get asked or at any point during the demos. Um, just before we begin, we have a few announcements. So since we last met, Foreman 2.0.3 and Foreman 2.1.3 have been released. These are primarily security releases with some updates for security fixes. And for more information and upgrade details, you can check out the release announcements on the Foreman community discourse. And on the Catello side, Catello 3.16.1.2 has been released. Uh, this release addresses 25 issues, and you can find more info on the release announcements of the Foreman Community Discourse also. I think that quite soon we will also have uh, another release candidate for Catello 3.17, uh, definitely before the next time we meet. And I think for today, that is everything from me. So our first demo is from Andra, and it's about improvements to the setting page. Andra, when you're ready. Yes, you should be able to see my screen now. Yep. And uh, today I'll be showing improvements on settings page. Uh, the page looks uh, without changes, um, but you'll notice the difference when you try to actually edit a setting because now you get this overlay and uh, model, which you might have seen on other pages as well. And uh, when you try to edit the setting and submit, uh, it will submit uh, your changes. And uh, this is related to the removal of some of our legacy JavaScript. And uh, hopefully this will also bring more consistency into our UI uh, as it is using the same component as the other pages. And that's it from me. Short and sweet. Thank you, Andre. And so far, I don't see any questions, but at the same time, it can be a little bit quick. So there might be, if there's anything about that, it might come in at a different time. And if anyone wants to ask about Andra's updates, you can just pipe up at any time. So up next is Partha with the first of the Catello demos around chunked exporting and importing via Pulp 3. Hey, uh, just a second. All right. Can you guys see my screen? OK. Yep. OK, neat. So there are two parts in my demo. The first one I'm going to demo what I call what we call the chunk to export. So the idea is if you have a repo I don't know, of, of several gigabytes and you want to split it into multiple megabyte chunks so that you can copy one at a time and then import that. Uh, to facilitate that, uh, we have added a chunk option. So let me. Let me show you one example. So here's my content view. Uh, there you go. It has nine packages in it. And it's, I think it's like, I think one of the files in this re repository is like 20 megabytes. So just for the demo purposes, I'm going to set the chunk size to one megabyte, right? And export this. So I get the version number from here, which is six. Uh, the version ID, I mean, uh, you, can, you can look it up here, six, yeah. And then I run a curl command uh, that does the actual export for me. Uh, let me let me paste that here. There you go. Now notice a couple of things. I set the chunk size in the megabytes to one, so every... <laughs> Every megabyte should come out as a separate file, as a, a different file. So let me do that uh, while it's it's running right now. Uh, let's see let's see where it exported exported this. 
So if I do that, I see a new version 3.0 here. So let me let me do an LS on this directory. And notice that the bunch of targees of chunks. So the idea is when it when it imports back, you actually are able to just transport in smaller bits at a time the amount of data you need. That's really cool. Uh, yeah, there's another metadata JSON file here. So this is something that is generated by Catello now. So one of the things that here is it has information like, let me see. Uh, actually, let me reformat it, sorry. There you go. So yeah, the metadata JSON file that is there in the directory now has information like, hey, this is the repository name. This is the custom product, the product name. Yeah, I call it custom, whatever the product name is. And here's like, hey, here's the content view and these, just the, these are the major and minor versions. So the idea is when you import this, you are giving it this metadata JSON file so Catello tries to make sense of that and then tries to validate which repository here points to which repository in the destination uh, down in the, ups in the ups downstream satellite. So let's let me. So I my the thing is I since I have, I have exported from this the pulp database already here has everything it needs. So I'm going to try a different repo, a different export that I've done in the past, just to show you the import process. So, so let me do a, okay. So in the, the past I have, I've, do, I've done a different import, right? I mean, I've exported sub, I've exported stuff in the past and this is like the standard export. I didn't put any chunking here. So if I did a cat on the metadata JSON and JQ, you will notice that it has it has two repositories, uh, Catello and MISC. And the content view is, is called view and the version is 1.0 and minor version is zero. Now, what I can do is I, I'll create a new organization. So I have a script here. So let me, I have a script here that creates a new organization, right? Then it creates a custom product with the name prod. So the names have to match the, the product name and the repository names have to match. So it creates a product in the day in the import organization. It also creates a repository one and a repository two. And we call this shell repositories because there's no URL here. There's no URL to sync from. You're, you're basically importing things to this. So that's the idea behind it. That's why it's called a shell repository. But as you see, it's empty right now here. Now, I then create a content view, right? And I finally add these two repositories to here. And then I do a hammer content view list in this import org to see all the content views that are in this org. So let's, let me just run that script quickly. This is just a setup. This is not actually import yet. So, okay. Well, sorry. My bad, just give me a sec. Mm -hmm. So here it's creating a new org, followed by the product creation, followed by the two repositories. Then it creates, yeah. Then it creates a content view adds the repositories and finally the 
content view list, just to get a list of IDs here. Now, before I proceed with the import, let me show you that it got added. So it's import 6699. That's the name of the org. So let me, sorry. Let me go to the main page, content views page. And you should see import 6699 org here. Uh, sorry about that. I, I, of course. Yeah, so there you go. So here's the view. We have not published anything yet. We have added two repositories. And both these repositories have not been synced. They do not, they, they do not actually point to any upstream URL. The upstream URL is nil. Uh, and yeah, the upstream URL here is nil. So these are co considered shell repositories. So we, we need this. We need these guys in the library for us to be able to import it into a content view. And I'll, I'll finish the import operation, then revisit this page. So let's get back to the import now. So here you see the content view ID is seven. Let me, so let me paste the curl command, just give me a second. And we are we are working on making adding hammer equivalents for all of this. Uh, this is right now this it's still an API endpoint, so we are we are having purely in curl. So again, you see that you see the import command where I gave it gave a content view version ID and I gave a path for it to import. All right, and so the, it it returns me like a. Uh, it's an async operation, so it takes a, takes about as much time as a publish should. In, in about. So let me see uh, here. Let's go back. If you did content views, yeah. You see there's a version of unknown now. This one second, let me rerun it again. I might have missed something. Uh, uh, just give me one minute. Uh, so, as you can see, the. Let me try the import operation again. Sorry about that. I'll delete this guy and. I'll have to figure out why that happened. Yeah. So let me, let's do that again. Okay. So let me paste it here while well, that happens. So here's my command again. So I asked it to import from this directory, maybe. So let, let me do an LS on this directory just to be safe. Hold on. Okay, okay. so I think you're good now. So let me try it again and Let's go back to the UI again. Version one. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm having some develop issue with my development environment, I think. So uh, anyway, the idea is, <laughs> let, let, me, let me fix this and get back. Uh, jo I'll join in after. Is that okay, Melanie? Of course, you know, the demo gods, you know, they don't smile on all of us all of the time. So that, no, that's completely fine. So I'll ask towards the end if you'd like to try uh, again, yeah, yeah. if you get it. I, I, would like, I would like to go more over it, yeah, sorry, thank you. It's no problem, Partha, um, I'll just check, but I don't think that there are. 
I don't think that there are any questions um, for you so far, but there's plenty of time if anybody wants to ask. Um, so then we have our next presenter is another Catello demo on introducing the working progress container gateway smart proxy plugin. And it is Ian, please. All right, hello, thank you. I'm just gonna get, get my screen shared here. Okay, great. So first up, I just have a bit of an introductory presentation here. So what I'm gonna be telling you all about today is a new smart proxy plugin that we have that's made for Catello, um, kind of as part of the uh, as part of the Pulp 3 effort that we have going on. So today with when you're using just Pulp 2, um, if you have a smart proxy um, that's running as a Pulp node and you sync some Docker content or container content, um, you can pull from that smart proxy um, using Podman or Docker, for example. But that functionality doesn't exist today in uh, Catel yet with Pulp 3, um, because there's a bit of a different architecture here. So what I'm showing right here is what Pulp 2, what the situation looked like with Pulp 2. So we had this thing called, so Pulp had this thing called Crane um, that was running on port 5000 um, that was kind of serving as the uh, registry. Um, so you, if you did your Docker pull, Podman pull, um, you'd be doing on 5,000. Um, now, what, what is working right now with Pulp 3 is you can do a Podman pull um, on the main Catello server, um, if, and there you just pull on um, your port 443, um, so you don't have to append any ports there. Um, but we do not have that yet for the smart proxy, the remote smart proxy with content. So you see here right now it's just... Apache on that port 5000 to Crane. So then we needed to create a smart proxy plugin so we can actually pull from Pulp 3. Um, now you could actually, if you wanted to, you could pull from Pulp 3's registry, but in order to actually support um, Catello authentication, authorization, etc., so that you, so that users can't pull from um, authenticated uh, container images, um, we have to implement uh, this smart proxy plugin. So this is the new strategy here, and it's still a work in progress, but this is what we're looking at. So you notice Crane is gone, because this is taking Pulp 2 out of the picture. Um, so we have, you go straight to Apache on the Catello server, that hits um, the Rails API, and then that redirects you to, um, the, to Pulp 3, the Pulp content app, which is on the the 24817 port. Now for the smart proxy, it's a similar story. Um, you go to Apache, you go through Apache to the smart proxy plugin, and then to figure out your authorization, um, say if you do a Docker login, that'll go back to the Catello server and fetch some sort of token and cache it, um, and then allow the user to pull um, their images that they should have access to. So this effort right now is in progress. Um, at the moment, uh, we, I have my first pull request in that's ready to be merged. I just have, just have to get it merged. Um, but it allows you to do podman pulling, um, but ignoring any of the authorization. So right now, it's all unauthorized. Um, that work will come later. Um, but let me just show you what some of these things look like. Um, the Smart Proxy plugin is very basic. So I'll just show you some of the endpoints here. So this is just a general overview. When you do a podman pull, podman's expecting to see certain endpoints like v2 manifests, v2 blobs, um, the catalog, and then this endpoint just for pinging. But what happens is I, in, in the smart proxy plugin, redirect you to pulp. So on the pulp side of things, the endpoints are at slash pulp core underscore registry. Um, now that's, that's our Apache config. We have it at that. Instead, it's actually at just the pulp endpoint. Um, but so it, uh, on the smart proxy, it looks like pulp core registry v2. And then pulp will redirect that to a pulp container with a token. Um, so just keep this in mind and keep these colors in mind. I'm just going to show you kind of a basic run through of what this API could look like um, if Podman was trying to get a manifest. 
so first Podman would get um, this manifest v endpoint here. Um, this is on the smart proxy plugin. And then the smart proxy plugin would do a get to pulp for its manifest endpoint. But then pulp redirects to this container endpoint with a, a token. And then when that redirection happens um, in the smart proxy plugin, I just pass that redirect back to Podman. Um, and everything is nice, and Podman is able to do the pull. Um, so what we're going to be working on after this is getting the actual authorization authentication working. Um, we have to figure out how to cache these tokens coming from Catello. Um, it looks like we'll probably be using Postgres because that already exists, um, thanks to Pulp being there. And here are the repositories. The top one is the official repo, and then the bottom one is my fork, because right now um, my fork is the only one that has the uh, started smart proxy plugin. Um, so that's just a brief introduction. I'll just show you a quick demo. Um, so I got my terminal up here with the smart proxy running right here. Um, so let's just do a couple of tests. Um, we can try a podman search. So we run a search here. Actually, let me make that pretty. Or actually, no, not that. So yeah, we do the search. Um, we can see I have a bunch of images here. Um, technically, I'm not supposed to be seeing all of these because like the library ones, I'm not supposed to have unauthenticated poll on that. But we're not doing the authentication yet. So yeah, we can see all these. And we can just try a poll on one of them for fun. Um, let's see, one that I tried before. So yeah, this uh, hello world. So we did a podman poll, and that worked out nice. We can try an ls, um, see if it came in. So there we have it. Um, and then just to show a little bit more about the API, um, you can look at the catalog. So it's the same stuff that podman search um, looks at. And then you can also, let's say, uh, if we're pretending to be podman, we could like try to w get a manifest. Um, so you can see this manifest was saved from this endpoint here, hostname v2. That's on the smart proxy. So if we just take a look at this manifest, you can see all the good image-related stuff. Um, so yeah, uh, if anyone wants to give this a try, feel free. Um, I'll be giving more updates in the future as development continues. Um, I hope to be developing more of this soon because I want to see people actually getting to use it. Um, but yeah, that's all for me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ian. Just check for some questions. Just give a minute. You're still presenting, I think, on the live stream. So, one sec. And I don't see, no, I just checked twice there and there are no questions for now. So we will move to our final Catello presentation from Chris Roberts on resolving traces with Hammer CLI. All right, let me go ahead and present here. Alrighty. Um, so I know a couple demos ago, I showed we showed the new tracer um, stuff going on with the UI that we changed around. So now we've added support to resolve traces from the, the CLI. Uh, so I'll just do a quick demo on that. So the first thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and get the list of traces. Um, so I'm going to restart one that doesn't actually need to reboot the computer or reboot the host. Um, so we'll go ahead and do resolve. So the new command is resolve and it takes the host ID and then you can, it takes an array of traces so that way you can do multiples. Trace IDs. We'll do cron. Um, and that will kick off a task. Um, and there's an async option as well. So if you want to do multiples um, or you don't want to wait, that's fine. Um, for the sake of the demo, I just wanted to show the actual task progress. Um, so that's where we started that. And we'll go ahead and 
check our host again to make sure that Crony doesn't need to restart. And as you can see, it's um, that restarted, uploaded the tracer profile, and now we have a new list um, without that. So that was all I had. So I'll go ahead and stop presenting. Perfect. Thank you very much, Chris. And just check. <laughs> Mr. Nook, yeah. That's um, the only comment I have so far is thanks, Mr. Nook. Um, sure thing. <laughs> OK, so we will move on now to a presentation by Mac or a demo from Maximilian on subscription manager on Debian and Ubuntu. This was a much requested item that um, got a lot of feedback last week. So I'm looking forward to seeing this. So Maximilian, when you're ready. Um, yes. Can you see the screen, Melanie? I can see your screen. OK, perfect. Um, yeah, today I'm going to present app.attix.de to you. Uh, we provide an open source subscription manager for Debian and Ubuntu. Um, yeah, as I said, it's a packet subscription manager in two consumable repositories. And both release files are signed with an Attix GPG key. We have one subscription manager for Debian 10 and one for Ubuntu 20.04. Uh, both are for architecture AMD64, component main, and codename stable. Um, that was, I guess, pretty, <laughs> pretty short, uh, but I've prepared a quick demo. I have a plain Debian 10 virtual machine, which um, I have SSH access to. And now we can actually attach the or register the host to a foreman or in our case to an orcarino um oops one thing's missing okay um first i logged into the host and downloaded the gpg key and now we're gonna add the app.attix.de debian 10 repository to our etsy app sources.list and now we can fetch the list of packages. This will just take a second. And now we can actually install the subscription manager. Um, it, the subscription manager is a meta package. Um, and depending uh, on which version of Python you're running, for example, here, uh, it's Debian 10. So it requires the Python subscription manager. Whereas on the other hand, Ubuntu 20.04 would require Python 3 subscription manager. This will just take a second. Um, and then in the second step, we can download the Catello RHSM consumer file, make it executable, and run it. It's basically a script containing several uh, certificates, um, as well as um, um, changing uh, or adapting the RHSM configuration. Um, and then in the last step, we can actually register our host with the organization dev and the activation key Debian 10. This will just take us, yeah, just take a second. Um, yes. And yeah, there, but there is more. We also provide the Catello upload profile package, which we can install from uh, app.attix.de. This will allow us to uh, upload a list of installed packages on the host to the foreman. We just ran this. Um, and to see what it does, it's a Debian package post invoke script. So every time a package, package is basically installed, installed uh, it'll run again. Um, and now we can have a look at the subscription manager repositories. We should see one. Um, OK, and we can try to update uh, the list of packages, which will not quite work yet. We will still need the app transport catalog, which we also provide, we can install. Um, this will just take a second. OK. And we can try to get a list of packages again. But as I already know, this won't 
work quite yet. There's an GPG key error uh, that the public key is not available yet, but we can uh, quickly deal with this and add the pulp Debian signing key to apt. And then my final step, run app get update again, and this should just work fine. Yeah. So now the host is registered and could technically receive packages from the foreman. That's basically all from my side. Um, if you have any questions or feedback, you can either send me an email or you can uh, go to the foreman community forum. Um, there's a thread, uh, it's thread 2667. Uh, thank you. Okay, for you, Maximilian, I have a comment and I have a question. So from Marek, I have the comment, I wonder if Catello uh, RHSM consumer script could be replaced with the registration template. You'll most likely see the whole registration flow in the next demo, dot, dot, dot. And then let me see now you've, then there's another question from Mark. Uh, would it be possible to push subscription manager, um, so the subscription manager devs to form a client repo? The motivation would be to have all the client tooling at one place. Um, to be honest, I, I, I'm not quite sure what the form and client repos is. Um, so I can't answer that right now. Um, but if somebody can explain, or maybe I can uh, yeah, get back to that in the future. Um, what, I think what he kind of means is that, and Mark, you can you can come correct me if, if I'm wrong in the in the chat, but I think it's that the it's coming from apps.atex.de and is there is it possible to basically get it from the foreman community space? Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, sadly, I, I I don't know. I can't answer that uh, right now. But if there's going to be an update, I will uh, surely uh, let you all know in the community forum. And that's completely fine. So I've got a thank you. I have also, uh, I've got a thank you from another user. And then um, LZAP says, nice work with Debian RHSM. And also, he said, nice documentation, um, or is there documentation planned? Um, well, <laughs> there is uh, app.artix.de, and I guess there's, there's not mo much more to say. You can, yeah, we provide the, the package subscription manager, and you can add the repository uh, to your liking, add the GPG key, and install it. Um, if there's specific questions, then maybe send me an email. But as of right now, we consider this uh, short readme to be uh, to be sufficient. No, that's perfect. And that's fair enough. And it's there's been a lot of excitement around uh, this. So, um, so thank you very much for coming along today and for telling us more about it in person, Max. So, and I think that's um, that's all the questions for okay. for you now. So. Perfect. Um, if the, if there are any questions, yeah, just send me an email or um, respond to the thread in the Foreman Community Forum. Exactly. Um, so up next is Amir, please, with the host the host details page and extension points. Hello, everyone. Um, let me just uh, share my screen. So um, today I would like to share the progress with the host data page and uh, the new host data page. Of course, this is an experimental feature. So this is currently, um, you. this is not uh, what you're going to see. You need to activate the experimental feature first in order to see that. And I, of course, uh, guide you how to do that as well. Um, so today I want to talk about uh, extension points. As we know, this page should be extended by our plugins. And we have uh, we, we want to have an opinionated way to extend uh, um, such uh, um, you know to, to extend this uh, via plugins. So we created a few ways in order to extend 
to extend plugins in this page. The, um, the first one is by adding tabs. So a plugin can add tabs. And the second one is by adding cards. As you can see here, we have cards, we have uh, um, properties cards, we have uh, parameters cards. And so plugins also uh, be able to add their own card to a specific tab. Um, and also we have, as you can see here, the kebab dropdown. So we also uh, would like to have uh, an extension point here. And um, so plugin also can add um, action item to a specific section. Okay, so before we dive, uh, dive into that, uh, I am not gonna share any code because this is, um, you know, this is experimental feature and the interface can be changed over and over again. So if you want to see the code, you can go to the to our community, to our the, the development community in this course, in our discourse. And there is a write up I made a few days ago and you can see much more details about the code. Okay, so how to activate the, the experimental features? You need to go to, as you can see here, the, there is a lab feature. So if you don't, if you, you need to activate the experimental feature in order to see this. So in order to activate it, you need to go to the settings. and search for a uh, lab features. And then you need to just activate it. After you do this, you go to the host index page. And then you can go and you can pick a host and you can, and um, in the, Action column, actions column, you can choose new host data page. So then um, let's demonstrate the first um, um, extension point, which is tabs. So I'm registering um, tabs from Catello. This is, of course, just a POC. So um, the tabs that actually arrive from Catello are containing nothing, but um, the contents basically arrive from Catello and registered from Catello. And Catello is a plugin, of course, and um, you need to register that content um, into Form and Core in order to have that content, this content, into um, the, uh, the host data page. And we have some features with the tab uh, extension mechanism. The first one is the ability um, to navigate directly uh, and via the address bar. So you just need to add hashtag and then you need to specify the tab name, for example, content. And as you can see, um, you, I think you cannot see the, the actual action, the actual address bar, but I just add a, 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 a hashtag and content and we and, and navigated to the content tab. Let's just um, head back to the overview with the same mechanism. And as you can see, we direct, we uh, navigated to the overview tab. Um, another um, feature is the ability to reorder the tabs. So a plugin owner can reorder the, tab, the tabs by um, uh, defining weights. So for example, I can um, bring the subscription item, the subscription tab to be the first one. Let's demonstrate that. I just need to give a higher weight. And as you can see, the subscription is the first uh, item, is the first tab. Um, another feature is the ability to scroll between um, tabs because we have limited space here. And if there are 
multi um, tabs, multiple tabs, we need a um, um, you know, scrolling mechanism. So uh, let's register lots of tabs. Again, from Catello. And as you can see, we have a scrolling mechanism, so we don't have any limitation about the space. So another extension point is by adding card content. Um, so as you can see, the card basically has a key value pairs. Um, so we can add card by a um, data-driven approach. So basically, we can add card without any knowledge in React. We can just uh, register data um, via, um, of course, the current uh, way with uh, ERB, for example. So let's demonstrate adding cards from Catello. And as you can see, we have Catello card one, Catello card two, which are basically a two cards that uh, con uh, contain um, key value pairs, uh, the same approach like other, uh, like other cards. And like, like the, um, the tab that, you, that the uh, plugin can change the order, it can, uh, the, the plugin owner can do the same uh, with the cards. So um, for example, card and uh, Catello card two can be the first one. So let's change the weight. It's the same mechanism of um, Waiting function. And the Catello card two is the first one, and Catello card one is the last item. Um, about the kebab dropdown for action items, at the moment, it, this is still not uh, implemented, um, but this, of course, will be implemented uh, um, as soon as possible. So we will have three kinds of way um, to extend the, the new host detail page from plugins, which is by the tab. So each plugin can inject their own content to a specific tab, um, as well by adding cards to a uh, an existing tab, or by adding an uh, action item in the kebab drawdown. And by the way, there is a progress by, um, is, there is a PR work in progress um, to add insights plugin to the new host detail page. And um, let me show you um, just a screenshot because I don't have the environment. I didn't create that PR. So as you can see, um, let's uh, just uh, click it. And as you can see, uh, there is an Insights um, tab in this page with um, the Insights content. And this is, of course, a work in progress uh, pull request. And uh, by the way, this content is, of course, uh, a React. And if you want to add um, other content, you, you can just add cards. So if you want to add to create tab, you need um, to add the React content. And if you want to add cards or action items to the uh, kebab dropdown, you can use the data-driven approach um, for key and value pairs. And that's all I have to share today. And thank you for watching. Thanks, Amir. There's one question so far. Uh, can cards also contain React components or arbitrary markup? Cards at the moment contain um, just a data-driven approach for a um, key value. And um, so we need an opin opinionated way um, to show that, to, to, to show cards. So at the moment there is a, a list card as you can, as you um, have seen, um, which um, basically has 
you know, a, a list of items. And in the future, we will have also table. And um, so you can add table by the data-driven approach. Um, but of course, with React, you can do anything you want. And um, But at the moment, this is still not implemented. So this is just a data-driven approach. If you want to add the content by uh, yourself, you can just add to, you, you can just create your own tab. Um, but I think we need to uh, keep the, the opinionated looks in the existing pages. OK, thank you very much, Amir. I'll just check, but I don't think there are additional questions as of yet. Partha, how's it going? Would you like well. Would you like to yeah. go to the room? Sure, yeah. So just a second, I'm sharing my screen. So, yeah. So I, I reran my, there's something wrong with my dev environment, apologize for that. But I basically reran the import command. I, to just put in context, we, we created shell repositories, uh, repositories with no content that had no URLs in them. In the, in the library, we added it to the content view. And to that content view, I import the contents of this directory. And I'll just go over that. I didn't. I don't want to take time. So, as you see, like versions, it shows you that there's 62 packages, eight errata, 15 module streams, and these all came from. If I go to Yum repositories, I see the same. Now, if I go to the library repositories that do not belong to this content view, you will notice that. Uh, you will notice that Catello has 39 packages. So it, what happens is when you import into a content view, it try it up, it also updates the library repositories that, that the content view point to. So it updated the contents of those two, those two repositories here via the import. That's pretty much what I had. Perfect, Parth, I'm glad that it got working in the end and i don't think that we have any more questions can hold on for one minute but yeah no i don't think that there are any more questions so i think that we have come to the end of today's demo so first of all i'd like to thank all of you who came today, especially people who came for the first time to present. I would like to thank everybody for your feedback on the YouTube live chat and in IRC and your questions. And just thank you everyone for watching. If there are any questions that come up afterwards, please feel free to write on the Foreman community discourse or to reach out on IRC, or you can even drop a comment on the, the YouTube video and I will track down the person and get an answer for you. So thank you everyone for watching. See you next time.